Ever since the Aperture M9 came out, pocket lights have been extremely popular due to their ability to fit into small spaces while still giving you full control of your lighting, even if you're restricted by other factors such as the layout of your location, square footage, or very specific blocking in your scene. While the M9 is still a great product, it has been five years since it came out and a lot has changed. So today I'm gonna review what I think is the best pocket light hands down. This is the Falcon Eyes F7. It's a small, magnetized, bicolor, and RGB light with built-in effects coming in at just $99 US. The F7 offers full RGB control over hue, saturation, and intensity, with stepless dimming all the way from 1% up to 100%, and bicolor control from 2500 Kelvin all the way up to 9000 Kelvin. It comes with a carrying case, a small mounting arm, a diffusion cover, and a grid to give you full control over the light spill and the quality of that light. It charges very quickly through USB-C. It has a battery life of about two hours on full brightness, which is ridiculously bright. And it has a CRI rating of 97, so the color rendering accuracy is insanely good. Lastly, it does have magnets built into it, so you can easily mount it onto any metal surface without the need for a light stand. You never really know what you're getting with some of these overseas lighting manufacturers that are just starting to emerge, but the build quality of this thing is fantastic. I've seen some reviews of the F7 Mini, which is an all plastic build and pretty flimsy by the sounds of it, which sounds pretty similar to the build quality of the M9, but this is the complete opposite of that. This has really good weight to it, it's not remotely flimsy, and giving it a good shake, there's no sign of any rattling or loose parts. On the front, we have the LED array, which is flush with the front of the case, making it nice and slim and it also has a little bit of slight diffusion built into it as well. The back has an OLED screen where we can see all the settings that we're adjusting as well as a little sticker here that tells us what effects are built into it. The rear screen is very bright and I didn't have any issues trying to read it even in direct sunlight and both that screen and the front panel seem to be scratch resistant which is a great bonus. After owning this for about a year now I really don't have any concerns whatsoever about tossing this in a bag and having it get bumped around or even dropping this from a pretty good height because it seems like it's built like a tank. The same thing goes for those lighting modifiers that are included. I've taken them on and off hundreds of times and stretched them out and I haven't seen any signs of any cracking or tearing. All of our controls are tucked into the side of the light to keep the profile nice and slim and it also prevents any accidental changing of settings, especially with the lip that's built in around those controls. There are two wheels. The first controls color and saturation depending on the mode and it also has a built-in button to switch between those two controls and the other wheel exclusively controls the output. Next to those is a button which controls power and also changes the mode between bicolor, RGB, and our effect mode. The light has an internal memory, which means you can switch between the various settings or even turn it off and turn it back on again, and it's still gonna pick up where you left off. If you think a little bit more creatively, you can actually take advantage of this and use it to create even more lighting effects than just the ones that are built in. For example, I could simulate some interesting party lights by setting my bicolor mode to 2700, setting my RGB mode to a complementary color like blue, and then have a fun flashing effect in my effects mode, and I can rotate between them simply by pressing a button. I could even do this in time with a song for a music video, and now I've got an animated dynamic lighting setup that didn't require any programming with DMX or MIDI. The output of this light is phenomenal for its size. Right now I have a Falcon Eyes light mat as my key light, but if I turn that off and we use the F7 at full output, at 5600 Kelvin, it's extremely bright and very hard to look at. Even with my key light on, you can still see that this adds a ton of punch on top of what it's already doing. I think it's crazy that you can get this much output from something that's literally like a twelfth of the size of my light mat. On the flip side, I also appreciate that this goes all the way down to just 1% brightness. Sometimes that's all you need in a dark scenario, just a little bit of light in a small corner. And when a lot of these lights only go down to like 10%, it can be really frustrating when that's just way too much for what you need. This is the first light that I've owned that goes all the way up to 9000 Kelvin. And I actually really like that feature because sometimes I just need a light source that's a little bit on the cooler side, 
but I don't want to jump into the RGB settings, figure out the exact shade that I want. This is just so much quicker to just dial it up to 9000 and have that slightly cooler tone. That wide range can also be really helpful when you're trying to match it to other light sources. Not every single light looks exactly the same, even if they all claim to be at 5600 Kelvin. So having a little bit of leeway there helps me make sure that they match as close as possible. The Kelvin adjustments are done in units of only 50 Kelvin, so you can get really precise with dialing in the right color temperature. The same issue is why I also like working with RGB lights whenever possible, because even if I'm just going to set them to 5600, if I'm matching them with other light sources, I want the ability to add just a little bit of green or a little bit of magenta to make sure it lines up with the other light sources that might have a slight color cast to them. You have a full 360 degree range of color control as well as saturation control. But one thing I noticed is that as the brightness gets lower, you'll see that the hue can actually shift sometimes to a slightly different hue than what it was when the light was brighter. Of course, you can simply just readjust the hue to get it to where it needs to be, but it's just an extra step and a little bit inconvenient. I don't see anywhere where this could be like a make or break thing, but it's worth knowing. The effects side is really handy. I love having small lights that can simulate very common effects such as lightning, a TV effect, or even fire. While these are helpful bonuses, that's probably the highest praise I can give them considering some of these effects are pretty limited. What bugs me the most is the fact that there's zero control over the brightness or the color of any of the effects. Now considering that's not the main selling point of this light anyway, I'm not too upset by it and I can always throw on some diffusion or something else to dim it down, but it seems like a pretty big oversight if you're gonna include effects in your light anyways. The other issue I have is that some of these effects are very unrealistic and probably the worst offender in my opinion is the fire setting. This just does not look remotely convincing compared to other lights that do a similar effect. Having such a short loop for the animation really doesn't help with that because if my shot's longer than a few seconds, it's gonna be pretty obvious that I'm using a fake fire effect. In a case like this, it probably makes more sense for me to just set it to an orange setting and then just wave a piece of cardboard in front of it randomly to at least create a more interesting and dynamic pattern that doesn't look so fake. Even with the effects that aren't meant to be recreations of anything, they're not meant to be realistic, there can still be some issues, like the color cycle effect looks great, but when it gets to the range of reds and oranges, it goes by much faster, seemingly, than all of the other colors. It almost accelerates through that range for some reason. There's also three separate flicker effects, and they're just red, green, and blue versions of the same effect. I don't see why we couldn't just condense those into one preset and then give you the ability to control the color. I mean, what was the point of that? Some of these effects are quite good and I have used them on video shoots before. It's just a little bit disappointing that the quality of these effects is so inconsistent. One of my favorite ways to use this light is in place of an actual light bulb when I'm working with practicals. Instead of accruing a collection of various light bulbs of different color temperatures, brightness, and types, I can just stick this behind a lampshade and have full control. This also saves me worrying about dimmers or light bulb types, if they're dimmable bulbs, if the dimmers I have are the right wattage, it saves me worrying about any of those other variables. Even in such a small space, it doesn't take up any room for me to add an edge light or even a splash of color to my background. Because it charges off USB-C, I can actually use some external phone batteries batteries that you can just get off of Amazon and extend the battery life way longer than just the built-in battery alone. The only downside is that this constant charging is going to present a bit of an overheating issue, so just to be safe, the light automatically is going to drop down to 70% brightness if you have it any higher than that, just to prevent any issues. Now for this to be the perfect pocket light, some changes definitely need to happen, but luckily a lot of these changes have already been implemented in the F7 Mark this version does fix some of these issues, but it's also at a higher price point of $125. So we're going to talk a little bit about comparing the two and see just how close we can get to the perfect pocket light. The F7 II has full control of the brightness and the speed of all of the effects, which is a massive upgrade to their actual usability. But the downside is, it seems like all the effects are the same, so they're probably not any more realistic than they are in version 1. I don't understand how they made sure that you have control of the brightness and the speed, but still didn't give you the option to change the color, which seems, again, like a huge oversight. This light also lacks any sort of smartphone app compatibility, so 
you can't control it wirelessly, which seems like a big issue because that's one of the nice bonuses about these lights is you can fit them in really hard to reach places. But if you want to adjust them after you've done that, it's going to be a massive pain now. And if you want to control an array of these lights in unison and create a grouping of them, you're completely out of luck. The main competitor to this light is the Aperture MC, which is their RGB pocket light. And it can control up to a hundred of these in an array. You can create different groupings. You can even use a color picker where you can take a photo with your phone of a color and it'll automatically match the light to that color. Now, luckily the F7 II actually does have Bluetooth app control with it, which is fantastic. And it does include that color picker mode as well, but I haven't been able to get any information on how it controls groups of lights or if it's any easier to work with in terms of managing an array of these things. And just while we're comparing the Falcon Eyes F7 line to the Aperture MC line, one big plus of the Falcon Eyes is that the F7 II has a gel mode built in, which is used to recreate the look of popular gels from manufacturers like Lee and Roscoe, which I think is a genius idea. The F7 definitely has some downsides, but the F7 II has made up for most of them. And in my opinion, is the closest to the perfect pocket light that we have seen yet. I think the F7 is a fantastic product and coming in at 25 to $30 cheaper than the F7 II, it might be a much better investment for you if you're not looking for all of those extra bells and whistles. If it's really important to you to have full control over a large array of pocket lights, then maybe it's better to go with the Aperture MC line. However, if you're just looking for a really good pocket light, I think it's a better investment to go with the F7 II. It's just fantastic. It has better output. It has better battery life. And at the end of the day, as a standalone light, primarily what you're going to be using it for, it just has more options. This does come in at 335 grams. So if you don't have those magnets fully covering the surface, maybe it's only half or maybe it's a slightly curved or rugged surface, then you're going to see some issues with this light slipping a little bit. Despite the quirks and the downsides, I can't help but recommend this based on the value alone. I'm really impressed with the light quality and output that Falcon Eyes can offer at this price point, and I've genuinely gotten a lot of use out of it in a ton of scenarios already. The flexibility that this offers is unmatched, and it opens up a whole new world of lighting possibilities, where I never have to worry again about whether or not I can fit a small kicker in a very tiny bathroom, or a splash of light underneath a car. Finally, the build quality is what solidifies in my mind that this is gonna be a reliable piece in my lighting kit for years to come. If you can spare the money, I'd really recommend getting the F7 II for all of the upgraded features that it offers, but the F7 is still a fantastic option and even better if you're just trying to save a little bit of extra cash. This is the second Falcon Eyes product that I've bought, including my light mat that I've been using as my key light, and I'm honestly really impressed at what they can do, and I'm really excited to see what they offer in the future. Thank you so much for watching. If you have questions about these lights, please let me know, but otherwise, I will see you in the next video.